Welcome back, folks. Okay, we just looked at the sealing of the saints, those who come out of the tribulation, the great tribulation. There's tribulation around since the beginning of time, but this is going to be one that is going to be the great. So now we're going into the seventh seal, chapter 8. And when he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer. And there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints, ascended up before God out of the angel's hands. And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it into the earth. And there were voices, thunderings, lightnings, and an earthquake. And the seven angels, which had the seven trumpets, prepared themselves to sound. The first angel sounded, and there followed hail and fire mingled with blood, and they were cast upon the earth, and the third part of the trees was burned up, and all the green grass was burnt. And the second angel sounded, and as it were a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea, and a third part of the sea became blood. And the third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died. And the third part of the ships were destroyed. And the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it was a lamp. And it fell upon a third of the rivers and upon the fountains of water. And the name of the star is called Warm Wood. And the third part of the waters became warm wood. And many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. And the fourth angel sounded, and a third part of the sun was smitten, and one third part of the moon and a third part of the stars. So as a third part of them were darkened, and the day shone not for a third part of it, and the night likewise. And behold, and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth, by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels which are yet to sound. Wow. Okay, here comes some more judgment. And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. Silence makes us uncomfortable. Silence is a warning. When somebody stops talking, you kind of get concerned of why are they not talking? Is there danger around us? Did I do something to upset this person? Silence. If you're not a quiet person and inward like I am, silence will bother you. Here is silence in the heavens. 
up until now, there's been worship going on in heaven. There's been activity. But now there is no silence. I mean, there's silence in heaven. What does that mean? Has God, God vacated? Is he just being quiet and the angels being quiet? Verse 2, And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. Oh boy, seven trumpets, remember. Trumpet announces. A trumpet tells what's going on, tells you what's to do. So something's going to happen. Verse 3, and an a another angel came and stood at the altar having a golden censer. And there was given unto him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. Incense. It makes something smell good, more appeasing, soothing. I don't know if you've ever seen a sacrifice, and I haven't, but can you imagine offering a sacrifice, a live animal, whether it be a bird, sheep, oxen, you take it up to the priest, you lay your hands on his head, if I... If I remember correctly, he slits the animal's throat, they drain the blood out, and then some of the animal is roasted on an altar to, for God. Some of it's kept for the person, some of it's kept and thrown out in the dump. But if they burn the fur, you can imagine what that's going to smell like. It doesn't sound very appeasing to watch pure, innocent animals die for our sins. But the whole thing about the golden altar is the altar is where we do our work with God or should be doing our work it's a holy place set apart for us to come to God with our problems it's a public announcement of our dedication to God because if we don't acknowledge God before men Jesus would not acknowledge us before the Father and the hosts of heaven. And that means we're not going to be going in. So we have to come before the altar to announce our sins and our other problems. So that's what the altar is about. So this angel's offering up incense to please God and the prayers of the saints. I can only imagine what that would be like. I know that when I pastored a church and we've had open prayer, there are prayers of the saints around me. Just lift me up and encourage me. And sometimes I think their prayers are better than what I pray. But we all are heard in our prayers. No one can outdo another person in their prayers. God attends to all of them. But I love hearing other people pray. And God loves it too. Verse 4. And the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints, ascended up before God, 
out of the angel's hands. Imagine what God is doing. Pleasing the offering. Verse 5. And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar. Now, first of all, around the altar, the fire is considered holy. If you remember, Aaron's sons offered fire on the sacrifices that was not holy, and they paid the price for it. They died. So this fire is holy, sanctified by God. Very important. And cast it unto the earth. And there were voices. We've seen this before when God is speaking to man. Ezekiel, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Moses. Voices, thunderings, lightnings. And this time there are earthquakes. If silence didn't get your attention... This will get your attention, all of this stuff going on. It doesn't tell us how long this was going on or if it damaged anything, but it was enough to get their attention. And I'm sure that is said in the message as well of what's going to follow. Verse 6. And the seven angels, which had the seven trumpets, prepared them to sound. Okay, this is what it's going to do. It's going to get your attention because something is going to happen. The first angel sounded, and there followed hail and fire mingled with blood. And the third part of trees would burn up. And all the grass was burned up. A third part really means a lot. It doesn't mean complete devastation. It just means there's a lot. Because remember, we got more stuff to come along. So there's got to be something left. Hail and fire mingled with blood. I've never seen that. Hell I've seen, but not fire and blood. That would be scary. And the second angel sounded, and as it were a great mountain burning with fire. We know what forest fires does and how devastated it is. But this one was cast into the sea, and the third part of the sea became blood. We've seen that happen in, uh, before the release of the Egyptians, uh, before the release of the Jews from Egyptian exile, that the sea turned red when Moses touched his staff into it. Verse 9, and a third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life, died a third part, and a major part of them. And a third part of the ships were destroyed. Now, it doesn't tell us how it was destroyed, but somehow they were destroyed. Maybe it was because of the waves that that mountain was cast into the sea. Verse 10, and the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp, and it fell upon a third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters. 
Again, a third part. Was this a meteorite? Was this another planet? We really don't know, other than the fact that it's classified in here as a great star. And the name of the star is called Wormwood. And the third part of the waters became Wormwood. And many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. Wow. And the fourth angel sounded. And the third part of that of the sun was smitten. And a third part of the moon and a third part of the stars, so as that the third part of them was darkened, and the day shone not for a third part of it, and the night likewise. What does it mean to be stricken? It means to be hit, but by what? Well, it's kind of apparent that it was God using his power to smitten the sun, the stars, the moons, and so forth. Verse 13. And I beheld, he's really paying attention and listening to what's going on. He may, not, again, may not understand this, but he, for the moment, he sees it. It's real to him. And heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Whoa, 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 to the inhabitants of of the earth by reason of the three angels which are yet to sound. Isn't this enough judgment or wrath? But there's more to go. A lot more to go. Slowly, God is allowing them to see his Majesty, his glory, his power, and honor. We'll see you in the ninth chapter.